fiscal would, of course, be 33. This is a summer use of the number 32 by the Indians. This is a Hopi Indian, uh, forgive me, Hopi Indian earth ball drawn by a Hopi Indian artist on a piece of buckskin. And it shows a series of small, of 32, a series of 32 small X's around the symbol of Kawa, the Indian, the Hopi sun god. So some of the Hopi Indians are familiar with the numbers 32 and 33. This is a more modern use of the circle and the numbers 32. This is the General Assembly building of the United Nations and above the room is a huge circle with 32 lights inside the second ring. 32 plus the circle is 33. I am certain that there are viewers who say that I'm making too much out of the Masonic numbers, 32 and the circle being the symbol of the sun. And I would expect that those critics would say that they do not know if I am right or wrong. So only those who wear the regalia or use the symbols in their life know for sure. This is the historic railroad depot in Douglas, Arizona, a city near Tucson, my hometown. This building has been converted into a police station and all of the police and other officials of the city will be working under this dome in the center of the building. If you count the divisions, you will count 32 of them with the circle in the middle becoming the 33rd division. You can even get the numbers 32 and 33 on your bed. A, manufa a manufacturer advertised this wooden bed in a local newspaper and there are two sun symbols, one at the head and the other at the foot of the bed. There are 32 divisions and the circle around them would be the 33rd division. This article shows that the number 33 shows up in the darndest places. The state was proposing, the state of Arizona was proposing that voters could vote any time within a 33 day waiting period. The article does not say why they had selected a 33 day voting period rather than the customary 30 day period, meaning one month. But I am trying to build a case that this Lucifer worship is worldwide and that these symbols are all around us and we often go without noticing that fact. What I'm trying to show you is that these Masonic numbers of 32 and 33 are everywhere and that they are often concealed. I am showing you that these numbers had universal use around the worship of the sun god. All cultures seem to conceal the numbers 32 and 33 around their worship of the sun god it is not just the Masons. This is a picture that shows a pair of obelisks at the temple of Amun, the sun god, in Heliopolis, Egypt. One of these obelisks was brought to London, England, there it is, and the other of these two obelisks at the sun uh, temple in Heliopolis was brought to New York Central Park in 1880. I have found no explanation as to why these two obelisks were brought to New York and, in and London, but I do know that if it was that it, I'm sorry, I do know that it was the Masons who arranged for their removal from Egypt. The Masons say that these two obelisks were a gift of the Egyptian government. This is another picture of twin obelisks, this time at the Temple of Karnak, north of Luxor, uh, Egypt. And this temple was built for the worship of Ra, the sun god. And this is another article discussing the location of another set of twin obelisks, once again connected to Egypt. These are claimed to be the oldest obelisks in the world, allegedly over 4,300 years old. They were at the outside of a funeral temple dedicated to Queen Pepi I, who the inscription, inscriptions claim ascended to godhood after her death. <coughs> this is a picture of twin columns on a Masonic lodge. I believe that these twin columns are in symbolic form representing the twin obelisks of a sun temple. This is a picture of the twin obelisks on the front of the Skull and Bones building at Yale University. There are reports that the Skull and Bones fraternity is connected to the Illuminati of 1776. So this, these twin obelisks are everywhere, all around us, we walk by and pay no attention. This next section will offend the Catholics once again. I'm going to show you slides of various Catholic churches and show you how they are connected to this concealed worship of Lucifer through the obelisk. But let me warn the Protestants, your time is coming as well. Let me show you how this conspiracy has been concealing symbols all around us and that as we go about our daily lives, we fail to notice these symbols and what they mean. Remember that the twin obelisks in front of the temples of the sun god, they were on each side of the front, the front door and invited the sun god into the temple. 
The Catholic Church started building these cathedrals, these Gothic cathedrals, in the late 1100s and continued through about 1530. This style of architecture has been called the Gothic style and is extremely beautiful. This is a slide of a picture showing the Gothic Cathedral of Cologne, Germany. Mackey's Encyclopedia says this about this particular Gothic Cathedral. In this cathedral, the symbolic principles of Gothic architecture, the distinguished, distinguishing style of the Freemasons, were carried out in deeper significance than in any other building of the time. I do not know what those symbolic principles were, but at the very least, one can see the extensive use of the obelisk all over the exterior of the building. But it is, in, it is interesting for the Masons to admit that they built their symbols into a Catholic church. And these symbols are not Christian, they are Masonic. This is the Cathedral of Chart Chartres, I guess, in France. It also has the twin obelisks, as do many of the other Gothic cathedrals. This is St. Patrick's Church in New York City. The Gothic, this Gothic cathedral is characterized by two giant spires in front of the church. I believe that these twin spires are a concealed symbol of the twin obelisk in front of the sun god temple. Each of the two spires on this church is 333 feet high, 330 feet high, once again a concealed 33. This is the Catholic Church in Medjugorje, Medjugorje, I don't know how to pronounce that, I believe in Yugoslavia where it is alleged that the Virgin Mary is appearing. These twin spires certainly do look like obelisks. This is the Catholic Church in Mexico. Here the twin obelisks are a little more stylized. This is the beautiful Catholic Church near Tucson, Arizona called Santa Vir del Bac. Notice here that this, front, this, this old church also has twin spires in front. The one on the right is not completed and the legend has it that it was not completed because the Spanish government taxed only completed structures. And if they did not complete the spires, the church would not be completed and hence not taxed. taxed. Here is another offending use of the numbers 32 and 33. Catholics, this is not very pleasant, but uh, <laughs> we've got to look at the truth and wherever it is. This is a picture of the current Pope John Paul II holding a thing the Catholics call a monstrous. This beautiful object is intended to hold what the Catholics call the host, a thin, round wafer representing the body of Christ used in the communion ceremony. If you count the rays sticking out from the circle in the center, you will count 32 of them. And if you add the circle as being one, you will find that the monstrance has a concealed 33 in it. 32 rays plus the circle of the sun is equal to 33. This is a brief article that was in the People magazine a couple years ago, 1985 to be precise. It said that the current pope wore a cassock, the long white gown uh, that he wears that contains a traditional 32 buttons. That means that the pope, no matter whether he is tall or short, wears a cassock with the same number of buttons on it. This is a full length picture of Pope John Paul II wearing the traditional cassock. I took that picture, put it on my Xerox machine, and made a photocopy of it, a black and white copy, of course, and then I could mark all of the buttons with a red dot, and I counted precisely 32 of them. The Pope's head would become the 33rd button on top of the 32 buttons. The head is the seat of man's ability to reason. As I've said, it would become the 33rd vertebrae on top of the spinal column, and I'm asking you, is it a coincidence? Once again, I'm certain that there are those critics who say that I see this concealed 33 everywhere, and of course that is true. But I believe it is that I understand the reasons for it, and I'm now looking for the concealed symbol, and I want you to know, as I'm showing you, I find it everywhere. There is one other interesting thing about the clothing that the Pope wears. This is the page in the dictionary that discusses the headdress worn by the Pope. It is called a mitre. Notice that just underneath the picture of the Pope's headdress, there is a picture of another mitre, a 90 degree joint formed by two joined pieces of wood or metal. This is a picture of the current Pope wearing the mitre hat. And this is the Masonic symbol of the square and the compass. So here we have a uh, the compass with the two legs extended and a mitre, a square, underneath it. The word for the headdress worn by, by the Pope is a mitre, Another word for the square would be a mitre. I'm certain it is just another coincidence. 
And I would like to provide you with some evidence that Pope Paul, John Paul II is a member of the Masons himself. Hold on, Catholics, this is not pleasant. This is once again a copy of Duncan's Ritual. This book has been printed, has printed rather, the actual ritual that the initiate Mason goes through in the first three degrees of the Blue Lodge. This is called the grip of an entered apprentice. This modified handshake is used by one Mason to secretly ident himself, identify himself to another Mason as being a member of the Lodge. Notice that in this drawing, the hand of the man on the right is pressing upon the top knuckle of the hand on the left. This is called the past grip of a fellow craft mason, meaning it is the second is the secret handshake of the second degree mason. Notice here that the man on the right is pressing the man's second knuckle. And this is the past grip of a master mason, meaning the secret handshake of the third degree mason. Here the man on the right is pressing the third knuckle of the man on the left. This is a picture of the Emperor Akihito in Japan, greeting the Pope in September of 1993. And this is a close-up of that handshake. And here we can see that the, the Emperor has his thumb on the knuckle of the Pope. This is not a normal handshake, but it is one of the three Masonic handshakes. I'd like to show you now a series of photographs that I took from the television coverage of Pope John Paul's visit to Denver, Colorado, also in September of 1993. This is a photograph of President Bill Clinton on the left and the Pope on the right as they greeted each other after the Pope had walked down the gangway from his airplane. Notice that this picture shows them shaking hands. This is a close-up of that handshake and it appears as if the Pope's thumb is not, notice, is not in a position where it should be if he was giving Bill Clinton the traditional handshake. It is curved as if he, as if it could have been given to Bill, uh, as if he could have been given Bill the recognition sign. But let's be fair, it's not on the knuckle, so we can't say. The television camera did not show the two until after they had already given each other a handshake, so we cannot know if the Pope's hand has moved up on Clinton's hand. All we can say at this time is that it appears not to be a traditional handshake and very nearly like one of a Masonic, uh, the Masonic order. Because if the Pope's thumb is curved as if he had wanted to give the President a Masonic handshake, because it is curved, rather. So we will never know, at least in this instance, because the camera got there too late. But others gave the Pope a Masonic handshake just a few minutes later. May I ask you, if you're watching this video now, to start watching the handshakes of our national and worldwide leaders and start noticing whether you see this Masonic handshake being given more often and we can now then start to identify perhaps some of the Masons around the world. After the Pope arrived, he went along a line, a greeting line of cardinals and other dignitaries. This is a slide of what appears to be a businessman and he's giving the Pope a Masonic handshake to the first knuckle of the Pope. I want to show you some other slides giving, showing others giving the Pope a traditional handshake to show that, there, that these other handshakes are out of the ordinary. This is once again another civilian giving what appears to be a normal handshake. Notice that his thumb of the civil that the thumb of the civilian is straight across and not bent at the knuckle. So it appears that this man is not a member of the Masonic Lodge. This is a slide of a priest giving what appears to be a normal handshake, although the Pope's hand is covering up the priest's hand. But his thumb of the priest appears to be straight, but it is difficult to tell. This is a clear Masonic handshake being given to the Cardinal, being given by this Cardinal to the Pope. The Cardinal's thumb appears to be on the Pope's second knuckle. This appears to be another priest giving the Pope a normal handshake. Notice that his thumb is straight on the top of the Pope's hand. This is a slide of a civilian giving the Pope a Masonic handshake. He might be a government official because that is Congresswoman Patricia Schroeder just to his right. This is Secretary of Commerce, Ron Brown, giving what appears to be the Masonic handshake. His thumb is on, is, is on what appears to be the Pope's third knuckle. This is another priest giving the Pope a Masonic handshake. Notice that his thumb is clearly on the Pope's third knuckle. And I think this is the last slide in this sequence. This is a woman giving the Pope a Masonic handshake. 
first time is clearly